Hi, welcome to Bible Buddy. Today is day 19 and we're going to be reading Genesis 48, 49 and Psalm number 5. So let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you for this opportunity for us to read together. I ask that you open our hearts and our minds as we are about to read these great sacred scriptures. I ask that you uh, open our hearts. Holy Spirit, come and reveal the scriptures to us. And, and we want to pray, we want to learn from these words, and we want to be able to apply it to our daily lives. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Okay, today I'm going to be reading from the New Living Translation. And let's open our books to Genesis 48. One day, not long after this, Word came to Joseph, your father is failing rapidly. So Joseph went to visit his father, and he took with him his two sons, Manasseh and Ephraim. When Joseph arrived, Jacob was told, your son Joseph has come to see you. So Jacob gathered his strength and sat up in his bed. Jacob said to Joseph, God Almighty appeared to me at Luz in the land of Canaan and blessed me. He said to me, I will make you fruitful, and I will multiply your descendants. I will make you a multitude of nations, nations, and I will give you this land of Canaan to your descendants after as an everlasting possession. Now I am claiming as my own sons these two boys of yours, Ephraim and Manasseh, who were born here in the land of Egypt before I arrived. They will be my sons, just as Reuben and Simon are. But any children born to you in the future will be your own, and they will inherit land within territories of their brothers Ephraim and Manasseh. Long ago, as I was returning from Pandanaram, Rachel died in the land of Canaan. We were still on the way, some distance from Ephrath, that is Bethlehem. So with great sorrow, I, bar I buried her beside the road to Ephrath. Then Jacob looked over at the two boys. Are these your sons? He asked. Yes, Joseph told them, told him. These are the sons God has given me here in Egypt. And Jacob said, Bring them closer to me so I can bless them. Jacob was half blind because of his age and could hardly see. So Joseph brought the boys close to him. And Jacob kissed and embraced them. And Jacob said to Joseph, I never thought I would see your face again, but now God has let me see your children too. Joseph moved the boys who were at their grandfather's knees, and he bowed with his face to the ground. Then he positioned the boys in front of Jacob. With his right hand, he directed Ephraim toward Jacob's left hand, and with his left hand, he put Manasseh at Jacob's right hand. But Jacob crossed his arms as he reached out to lay his hands on the boy's heads. He put his right hand on the head of Ephraim, though he was the younger boy, and his left hand on the head of Manasseh, though he was the firstborn. Then he blessed Joseph and said, May the God before whom my grandfather Abraham and my father Isaac walked, the God who has been my shepherd all my life to this very day, the angel who has redeemed me from all harm and may he bless these boys may they preserve my name and the names of abraham and isaac and may their descendants multiply greatly throughout the earth but joseph was upset when he saw his father place his right hand on ephraim's head so he lifted to move it from ephraim's head to manasseh's head no my father he said this one is the firstborn Put your right hand on his head. But his father refused. I know, my son, I know, he replied. Manasseh will also become a great people, but his younger brother will become even greater, and his descendants will become a multitude of nations. So Jacob blessed the boys that day with this blessing. The people of Israel will use your names when they give a blessing. They will say, May God make you prosperous as Ephraim and Manasseh. In this way, Jacob put Ephraim ahead of Manasseh. Then Jacob said to Joseph, Look, I am about to die, but God will be with you and will take you back to Canaan, the land of your ancestors. And beyond that, I have given your brothers. I am giving you an extra portion of the land 
that I took from the Amorites with my sword and bow. Then Jacob called together all his sons and said, Gather around me, and I will tell you what will happen to each of you in the days to come. Come and listen, you sons of Jacob. Listen to Israel, your father. Reuben, you were my firstborn, my strength, the child of my vigorous youth. You are first in rank and first in power, but you are un as unruly as a flood. For you will be first no longer. For you went to bed with my wife, you defiled my marriage couch. Simon and Levi are two of a kind. Their weapons are instruments of violence. May I never join in their meetings. May I never be a party of their plans. For in their anger, they murdered men and they crippled oxen just for sport. A curse on their anger, for it is fierce. A curse on their wrath, for it is cruel. I will scatter them among the descendants of Jacob. I will disperse them throughout Israel. Judah, your brothers will praise you. You will grasp your enemies by the neck, and all your relatives will bow before you. Judah, my son, is a young lion that ha has finished eating its prey. Like a lion, he crouches and lay down, lies down, like a lioness who dares to rouse him. The scepter will not depart from Judah, nor the ruler's staff from his descendants, until the coming of the one to whom it belongs the one whom all nations will honor. He ties his foe to a grapevine, the coat of his donkey to a joyous vine. He washes his clothes in wine, his robes in the blood of grapes. His eyes are darker than wine and his teeth are whiter than milk. Zebulun will settle by the seashore and will be a harbor for ships. His borders will extend to Sidon, Sidon. Ishakar is a sturdy donkey resting between two saddle paths. When he sees how good the countryside is and how pleasant the land, he will bend his shoulder to the load and submit himself to hard labor. Dan will govern his people like any other tribe in Israel. Dan will be a snake beside the road, a poisonous viper along the path that bites the horse hooves, so its riders is thrown off. I trust in you for salvation, O Lord. God will be attacked by marauding bands, but he will attack them when they retreat. Asher will dine in rich foods and produce food fit for kings. Naphtali is a doe set free that bears beautiful fawns. Joseph is a foal of wild donkey, of a wild donkey, a foal of a wild donkey at a spring, one of the wild donkeys on the ridge. Archers attacked him savagely. They shot at him and harassed him, but his bow remained taut, and his arms were strengthened by the hands of the mighty one of Jacob, by the shepherd, the rock of Israel. May the God of your father help you. May the Almighty bless you with the blessings of heavens above and the blessings of watery depths below, and blessings of a breast and wound. May the blessings of your father surpass the blessings of the ancient mountains reaching to the heights of eternal hills. May these blessings rest on the head of Joseph, who is a prince among his brothers. Benjamin is a ravenous wolf, devouring his enemies in the morning and dividing his plunder in the evening. These are the 12 tribes of Israel, and this is what their father said as he told his sons goodbye. He blessed each one with an appropriate message. Then Jacob instructed them, Soon I will die and join my ancestors. Bury me with my father and grandfather in the cave in the field of Ephron in Hittite. This is the cave in the field of Machpelah near Mamre in Canaan that Abraham brought, bought from Ephron the Hittite as a permanent burial site. There Abraham and his wife Sarah are buried. There Isaac and his wife Rebekah. They're buried and there I buried Leah. It is the plot of land in the cave that my grandfather Abraham bought from the Hittites. When Jacob had finished his charge to his sons, he drew his feet into the bed, breathed his last, and joined his ancestors in death. And today we also going to read Psalm 5. O oh Lord, hear me as I pray. Pay attention to my groaning. 
Listen to my cry for help, my King and my God, for I pray no one but you. Listen to my voice in the morning, Lord. Each morning I bring my request to you and wait expectantly. O oh God, you take no pleasure in wickedness. You cannot tolerate the sins of the wicked. Therefore, the proud may not stand in your presence, for you hate all you who do evil. You will destroy those who tell lies. The Lord detests murderers and deceivers. Because of your unfailing love, I can enter your house. I will worship at your temple with deepest awe. Lead me in the right path, O Lord, or my enemies will conquer me. Make your way plain for me to follow. My enemies cannot speak a truthful word. Their deepest des desire is to destroy others. Their talk is foul, like a stench from an open grave. Their tongues are filled with flattery. O oh God, declare them guilty. Let them be caught in their own traps. Drive them away because of their many sins, for they have rebelled against you. But let all who take refuge in your rejoice, in you rejoice. Let them sing joyful praises forever. Spread your protection over them, that all who love your name may be filled with joy. For you bless the godly, O Lord. You surround them with your shield of love. There we go. Thank you for reading, and um, let's concentrate on what we read today and, and see how we can apply it to our daily lives. And uh, hope that you have a good day.